how do I know if I'm tapering off prednisone too fast? Well, there are certain things to look out for that I'm going to outline in this video so that you know whether it's the taper or something else that is telling you that what you're doing is too fast. Before I dive deeper, I want to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist. And a resource I have for you that is super valuable is my printable prednisone taper chart. You can print it off and use it while you go through the rest of this video or print it off after watching it. But download my prednisone taper chart so you know exactly the safe ways to taper off prednisone. So how would you know if you're going off prednisone too fast? Because the fact is, a doctor can prescribe prednisone in an infinite variety of ways. They can start at a thousand milligrams or at one milligram. They can have you go for five days or for five years. There's no limit to the variation and the creativity a doctor can give in prescribing prednisone. So how do you know if you're tapering too fast? Well, let's talk about what is a taper first of all. A taper is when you're slowly decreasing the dose over time so that you're giving your body the chance to build itself back up in response to having that super high level of prednisone, which is mimicking our body's natural hormone cortisol, so that it can recover. For example, in the springtime, after a whole winter of grass not being watered, of freezing temperatures, and maybe even snow being on grass, the grass has gone dormant. And it's ugly and yellowish, greenish, grayish, brownish, right? It's not pretty. So that first day you turn on the sprinklers, does the grass turn green? No, it takes time. It takes time to recover that ability for the old grass to die out, for the new grass to grow and turn rich, dark, green, lush, soft grass. That's what I want us to envision as we're talking about how do you know if you're tapering too fast? If you are suddenly dropping too much, then you might have been expecting the grass to turn green with just one watering when you really needed to water it for a lot longer for it to recover, okay? So what is too fast? Is it dropping every day or every week or every month? It's dependent on every single person because every single person has different DNA, disease, and dose that they're taking. And so there's no way to compare, well, my sister did this or my neighbor had that. It doesn't matter. It's you specific with your DNA, your disease, your current inflammation symptoms, okay? And so it, you'll know you're tapering too fast. If you feel like the people I'm about to read their descriptions, if these are the symptoms you're experiencing, all right? Let me just read real words that people have described wondering, is this prednisone withdrawal? One person said, why is my body so stiff, especially my legs? Another person said, I am down to three per day from 45 milligrams two years ago. I have no energy and feel nauseous all the time. Is it because of the prednisone? I feel awful most of the time. Is it normal to have extreme fatigue some days where I can't do anything? Huge hair loss since the cut from 30 to 20 on down now. Also, since the initial cut from 40 to 20, I'm very tired and sleep a lot now. Is this normal? What should I look for? Another person said, I had an extremely difficult response of tapering from prednisone for GCA, 60 milligrams after four weeks to 50 milligrams for two weeks and then 40 milligrams. I had to stop after five days and go back up to 50 milligrams. The response was like the worst of low blood sugar episodes. Listen carefully. These are some really important words, she says. Fatigue, shakiness, lightheadedness, feeling of being hollow inside, all energy drained out, hot flushes, etc. Is this explained due to the increased number of cortisol receptors my body developed due to the period of high prednisone dose and then leaving these hungry once the prednisone dose was reduced? That's exactly what's happening. She got it. She must have seen a previous video of mine. That what is happening when you take prednisone is your body is changing the number of what are called glucocorticoid receptors in your body. Normally, you make the equivalent of 2.5 about milligrams of cortisol per day. That's what naturally your body was making before you started taking prednisone. And so 
when you start taking this pill, it turns off a whole cascade of hormones in your body called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, two places in your brain and one above your kidney. And it's turning that system off. So you are no longer making cortisol and you're now giving cortisol by pill in the form of prednisone. Then you normally had say one glucocorticoid receptor per amount of cortisol you had floating around, but you've gone way beyond 2.5 milligrams, right? For me, I was up at 60 milligrams. Other people are at 40 or 20, whatever it is. 20 is 10 times the amount that you're normally making almost. And so your body to be able to actually use it has to build these receptors on the cells in order to actually use up this extra cortisol floating around. It has to have somewhere to put it so that it can do its job turning on things, turning off things and changing things, making you feel better. The reason you're taking it, it has to make more of these receptors. But when you take prednisone from 30 to 20, that's this huge drop. And you have these receptors that a third of them are now not being triggered, right? When you drop from 30 to 20, that's 33% that's gone. And so you had all the receptors built up for the 30 milligram dose you were used to. Now a third of these receptors are empty and they're figuratively screaming, I'm empty, feed me, I need something. And so you feel these symptoms that we've described. Specifically in the literature, these are the words that scientific studies use to describe, they can call it either prednisone withdrawal syndrome, steroid withdrawal syndrome, or glucocorticoid withdrawal syndrome. And in general, with other medications like opioids, such as heroin, benzodiazepines, such as Xanax or alcohol, it's generally either called withdrawal syndrome or discontinuation syndrome. So these are the symptoms specific to the prednisone withdrawal syndrome. Dizziness, lightheadedness, fatigue, bone pain, joint pain, headaches, hypoglycemia, and that means low blood sugar. Hypotonia, that means low grip strength, like you're just not able to be as strong as usual. Nausea, sleep disturbances, weight changes and fever. And back to those last few, the sleep disturbances. For some people, this can mean they are exhausted and tired all the time. They're basically stuck in bed and they, they just feel the need to sleep all the time. For other people, they're suddenly experiencing insomnia and not able to sleep at night. It can be either direction, either no sleep or can't do anything but sleep. And then weight changes. Most people gain weight the higher the milligram dose. And so when they're tapering down, they lose weight, theoretically, or they stop the weight gain. Some people dramatically lose a lot of weight because the nausea and things are so horrible and they're stuck on the couch, they're, they're not feeding themselves. Their muscle loss is dramatic and it can be really, really hard. That can happen. Or some people are like, Thank heavens, I'm not one of the 70% of people who gained weight on prednisone on those high doses. I'm so lucky, look at me. And then they taper down low and now they're suddenly gaining weight. They're like, that wasn't fair. I thought if I got lower, I would lose weight. That's not typical, but some people it does happen. So you can have changes that are really unfair, annoying and non-specific. That's the medical term. So it's really confusing. Are you having prednisone withdrawal, or for example, joint pain, muscle pain. Are you having your disease coming back? It's so hard to find the difference. Where is that line where you can tell, oh, this is clearly prednisone withdrawal, and this is clearly my disease coming back. It's really hard to find, and that's why you've got to be in close communication with your doctor. And those are the things to be looking for. When you're tapering, is my disease coming back? or am I going through prednisone withdrawal syndrome? The other tricky part about the non-specific nature of the prednisone withdrawal syndrome is that it could be mistaken for something else. I had a patient whose family called me. They're like, mom's been in bed. This was back in 2020. And we're pretty sure, like we thought she had COVID. And so now we think she has had long COVID and she's been non-functional and they like listed every single one of these symptoms. She's been stuck in bed. And they're like, but we couldn't do testing back then because they were living in New York and it was right at the height of the pandemic that they thought she got COVID. At the same time, her prednisone prescription ran out and she stopped taking it. So they couldn't do testing. There wasn't testing yet to test for COVID, but she also had stopped taking prednisone. 
So was it COVID? Because a lot of these symptoms could be COVID or long COVID, or was it prednisone withdrawal syndrome? And she's still suffering from that. It was a really tricky situation. And so they were so grateful to find out that it probably was prednisone withdrawal. And let's just give her back some medication. So what do you do if you have prednisone withdrawal syndrome? I gave you the clue already. You go back. Go back to the lowest effective dose where you are not feeling those symptoms. For every single person, that lowest effective dose will be different. And so you've got to find what that is. For one of these people, she went from 60 down to 50 down to 40 and had to go back up to 50. For her, that was the place. She needed to stay on 50 longer. She was tapering too fast and was experiencing prednisone withdrawal symptoms. So you get back to that other place and instead of dropping this huge drop from 50 to 40, maybe next time she only goes to 45, right? Or maybe she does alternate day dosing of 50, 45, 50, 45, 50, 45. I have a lot of tips and even more tricks of what you can do to optimize your prednisone tapering in my printable taper chart. So you should download it now for ways you can taper. You can print them off, mark it with your pen to keep track and know exactly what dose you're supposed to take, when you're supposed to take it, with a lot of options so that you can feel confident that you're gonna get off safely and recover from taking prednisone. Just click the link to download my prednisone taper chart. It's printable and free now. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.